uh, Mithun, uh, keep in mind the recording also simultaneously. Yes, yes. Any second now. We are live. Okay, let's start now again. Yes, you are live. Okay. Namaskar and uh, a very good afternoon to everybody. Honorable Minister, Department of Tourism, Odia Language, Literature and Culture, Sri Jyoti Prakash Panigrahi, sir. Esteemed Principal Secretary, Dr. Vishnu Padasethi, sir. Director and Additional Secretary, Sri Ranjan Kumar Das, sir. And other dignitaries present here. I welcome you all to this international webinar for discussion on COVID, museum and challenges. We are doing this webinar in collaboration with THC, the Heritage Consortium Partner. We will discuss all about the challenges we are facing in this pandemic period in each and every museums all over the globe. This will be a series of webinars and it will continue under the banner Indra Dhanu or Rainbow, the Ray of Hope. We are happy to have with us Dr. Anamika Biswas, Deputy Director, SARC Cultural Center, Colombo. Dr. Aurobindo Mohajan, Regional Deputy Director, Museum, Government of Bihar. Mrs. J. M. Gandhi Mati, Conservation and Geology Section, Government Museum, Chennai. And our co-organizer, co Mr. Vibhas Kumar, the Heritage Consortium Partner. And also we have with us Suchismita Mantri and Dr. Bharatipal, our curators. Before going to the discussion, I would like to request our Honorable Minister, Sri Jyoti Prakash Pani Grahi, sir, to inaugurate, to inaugurate this webinar by presenting his inaugural address. Sir, please. So you are mute. Namaskar. I declare the webinar inaugurate. As you know, all of you today, we are going to discuss a very contemporary subject that is COVID, museum and challenges. I'm happy that we are participating in a cross-cultural platform from across India and outside also. People who have love for the heritage and museum are participating. I appreciate and I, I hope department's principal secretary has joined, director also must have joined and, uh, and thank you, our special guest of the webinar, Dr. Anamika Viswas, Deputy Director, SAR Cultural Center, Colombo. We have Dr. Arvind Mahajan, Regional Deputy Director, Museum Bihar. Ms. James Gandhi Mati, Curator, Government Museum, Chennai. Mr. Vivas Kumar, the Heritage, Consortium Partner, Patna, Superintendent State Museum, Mrs. Suchi Smita Mantri, moderator of the webinar and the other panelists and friends. As you all know, our life has come to a halt in the pandemic situation. Everywhere, there is a standstill and stalemate. In a personal front also, we are facing lots of challenges. Schools have shut down, colleges are not open. We have also situation that we have to do a movement in a careful manner. We never experienced this kind of situation. I am at least uh, reaching 55 years 
in the lifetime we never uh, experienced, we do not know. And we hope the God is not going to again allow this kind of pandemic for our coming generation also. Despite all the odds, under the visionary leadership of our Honorable CM, Sejutta Nabin Patnaik, he has taken lots of steps that people in Odisha are better and safe, which have been applauded everywhere in terms of fighting the COVID-19 situation. Now I must tell you, our museum is the mirror of our state. In fact, it is the mirror of every state where the state museum is there. So it, it could be a center of entertainment. It could be a center of learning also. And uh, it provides lots of information to the students. As I know, in our museum in the state of Odisha, we also provide kind of opportunity to the students to come in different batches and do a you know learning experience in the state museum. We have different displays, pictures, artifacts, stone carving, monuments. Enthusiastic uses to know about the past and the historical events he is the crux of the museum. It also plays a very variety of roles in the preservance of the archaeology sites. As you, I must tell all of you, it also is a storehouse for the many of the historical events, arts and artifacts, tribal life and culture and traditions. It has a reputation in collections in Eastern India. We have a special art gallery, Buddhist monuments, stone carvings collected from various places where hundreds of visitors were using to visit the museum. When this scope is ceased, it becomes an abnormal situation all over. The, now the challenges lies in terms of pandemic. We are facing what is that we can do to get rid of this situation. No one knows how long this is going to continue. The science community is trying their best to give a kind of relief to the humanity. The vaccine is in place, but still there is every time. We do not know whether it's a third wave will come, fourth wave will come, but the government is doing its best so that life becomes normal. I can tell you that during the COVID past phase itself, as you all know, we started also a very aggressive process of reaching out to people through web. Different, uh, we have other, you know, academies. We have those academies have started performing in a web platform. Coming to the museum, we also opened up some part of the museum, which uh, to the, in the social media platform. And uh, I can tell you, that if this goes successful, 
we are also ready to open keeping keeping the security in mind other parts also i am happy that today we are here to throw more lights on the challenges we must think combinedly how to overcome this kind of situation in the future i hope the experts in the field will enlighten us and will put forth their valuable suggestions in this regard this webinar in fact an experience sharing and the learning exercise i wish the event all success thank you all bande utkar janani thank you sir for your such valuable and uh, inspiring speech thank you sir our esteemed principal secretary dr vishnu padasethi sir in his initiation a lot of innovative work is uh, going on in odisha state museum he is uh, in fact more interested to do all the work in digital platform and giving us inspiration how to face challenges in this pandemic situation i would now request our principal secretary sir to speak some lines on this webinar sir please honorable minister tourism uh, odia language literature and culture shri jyoti prakash manigrahi ji uh, we are indeed fortunate that uh, sir you agreed to inaugurate uh, this international webinar and the topic uh, which is chosen is museum and challenges and uh, it is a great thing to know that the uh, the sark cultural center is also collaborating with us and uh, sir we have a host of dignitaries who would be speaking uh, to the listeners we have uh, bibhas kumar who is the director of heritage museum and uh, dr anamika vishwas dr arvin mahajan and ms uh, gandhimati uh, she is from uh, chennai museum and uh, my colleagues uh, dr varthi pal suchitra tamantri and uh, the main person behind uh, our director culture sri ranjan kumar das uh, you know he he is also there in this, uh, this seminar a hearty welcome to all the people who are from outside odisha and i must uh, thank dr vagyalipi mallya superintendent of odisha museum for having organized this and i am sure uh, it is uh, the first uh, in a series of uh, the seminars and conferences that you would like to get connected with uh, many other museums in the country and outside i gratefully note uh, that uh, once i had visited i think a years ago uh chennai museum and that time one ias officer mr kanan was the commissioner museum and i was impressed with the kind of work chennai museum uh, was doing then i'm talking about 15 years ago my visit to chennai museum and in the meanwhile uh, i have heard a lot of good work being done by bihar uh, we uh, in fact we have a common history with bihar because some of our uh, objects that we have kept Uh, dead back to the kalinga war the ashokan period uh, and you know they are the most uh, antique things that we have kept in odisha museum and uh, they the bhopal museum bihar museum they are doing a great job and in fact uh, i had been requesting my colleagues that we must uh, learn as to what good work uh, is being done by uh, other museum in the country and outside so that we replicate and we do a better job than we are doing now and uh, unfortunately covid came in between and uh, put a lot of halt into our thoughts and plans and uh, everything was not bad covid as far as museum is concerned because uh, you know it also gave us time to uh, do things which otherwise you couldn't have uh, done in the normal time because of the rush of the work but uh, as honorable minister was saying the covid uh, gave a, uh, a huge dent 
on our uh, life system, our uh, the, the way of our living. And uh, most important thing that we noticed was is the museum uh, the survive or they exist for the visitor. And uh, the, museum, the museums have been shut. There have been no visitors. And uh, most of the income of the museums are from the visit fees that I've seen in uh, elsewhere in the world. And I'm sure uh, when the income has you know, uh, reduced so significantly, I'm not talking about the public museum, and I'm sure uh, there have, must have been a lot of retrenchment and salary of employees must have been reduced. And uh, this must also have affected the livelihood of a lot of people who are dependent on museum. For example, when you have visitors, you have also art shops, you have uh, cafeteria, and you have, you know, other, you know, the people who provide transport services. So a lot of people have suffered on account of COVID and that too, who are directly also related to the running of the museum. And uh, since income uh, have, must have you know, gone down, the work relating to preservation, expansion, and also the routine, routine work must also have suffered uh, in other places. Similarly, uh, in normal time, we do a lot of collaborative research. We organize a lot of you know, exhibitions. I, I think they have also come to a grinding halt. So we also, when there was a partial uh, lifting of the lockdown, we regulated the visit and allowed some visitor. But unfortunately, when the second wave came, I think everything had to be shut down. And as we hear about the third wave, the things look very uncertain. But however, in the meanwhile, uh, there are a lot of projects which are pending for a long time. And our museum superintendent, our director, they did a great job uh, in you know, completing those assignments. And uh, very soon, Honorable Minister would be, uh, uh, you know, the, the launching or inaugurating our Kalinga uh, Art Gallery of Contemporary Art. And this has been done during this you know, lockdown period. This is one of the largest uh, art gallery um, uh, to have been constructed in the eastern part of the country. And this is almost uh, done. Similarly, uh, you know, because of the 150th uh, anniversary, the birth centenary of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, we also created a Gandhi Art Gallery. I think that is also being completed. We also have done one Freedom Fighters Gallery. Honorable Minister was very particular. He comes from a family of uh, freedom fighters and he wanted uh, a freedom fighters gallery and that is almost uh, done. Similarly, we are also putting up an inter intangible heritage gallery that is Odisha to ages from the prehistoric time to the current time. So that is also coming up. One exhibition gallery that is also being put up. And in the meanwhile, uh, the superintendent uh, museum has introduced music system in all galleries. That is, uh, once you walk through the museum, you would uh, come to listen the Odia traditional songs. That is, Chanda, Champu, and Chautisa. So I think there was some time when we could do this. Another most important thing Honorable Minister wanted and uh, Honorable Chief Minister also had asked us to do is the uh, making the ho whole museum uh, on a virtual mode. So. When you visit museum, you walk through for a limited period of time and you listen and see through in your eyes. But uh, when you put the entire museum with the background data on virtual mode, I think uh, people have you know, great access to those, you know, the knowledge. So uh, one important uh, work is being done and I'm sure it will be also done in uh, right time. And uh, they have you know, digitized 20,000 know, manuscripts of palm leaf. And uh, online mode, it is available. Uh, 1687 number of menu, manuscripts, that is 20 lakh pages, they have been you know, uh, made available online. And similarly, many other projects they have and they are doing this. And since this is the museum, which is uh, run and owned by the government, we have funds and our people are not sitting idle and they are doing a great job. And uh, Honorable Minister, have, he is from the IT background. He has always advised that we must, uh, this is an opportunity for us to uh, adopt IT in a massive way, like the uh, VC that we are holding today. We must have, you know, IT, uh, we must upgrade our IT infrastructure. 
in not only for the museum but also other wings of the department so the it is being adopted and uh, there will be a lot of virtual space created and one idea that was also come up and uh, we are also going ahead with this organizing book exhibition in a virtual mode so uh, i think you know there could be more participation if you have a virtual uh, mode and a book exhibition so though the covid is a very painful time i think as honorable minister said it was never experienced in our lifetime you know it had been experienced by humanity humanity had overcome this kind of crisis at several points uh, in the history but uh, in our lifetime this is the worst uh, phase that we are going through and if we survive and we uh, remain alive to see the better days and i am sure we will be happy with uh, many things that we are doing quietly so that once the uh, lockdown is over and the people once they visit uh, museum i think they will have a, a better uh, scope and idea so i would not take more time because we are eager to listen to anamika and other experts who would let us know uh, what good things we should be doing so it is more of a learning uh, from others than for us to tell what we have been doing this is not the occasion for us nevertheless thank you very much for joining and i am uh, thankful to uh, all those who collaborated with us and for making this uh, uh, webinar a possibility thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much for your valuable speech and uh, now our uh, director sri ranjan kumar das um, will join in this webinar after some times now he is uh, uh, busy in in a very uh, important uh, work so let's now uh, start our technical uh, session and um, as you all know our uh, odisha state museum is the Uh, storehouse uh, of culture and the heritage of odisha over a period of more than 6 decades this institution has continued to grow in many directions with a rich collection of exhibits including sculptures coins epigraphs lithic and bronze age tools and anthropological artifacts mining and geological uh, treasures folk and tribal musical instruments varieties of handicrafts palm leaf parcels etc and uh, these cultural properties are exhibited in uh, different galleries of odisha state museum as you all know uh, those who are participated in this uh, you know and uh, most of the persons uh, are very much uh, friendly and um, cordial with me like anamika madam and uh, uh, mohajan sir bibhas all are very much known to me so uh, as our principal secretary told we all are interested to know what to do and how to do more and more things for, for our museum in this pandemic uh, situation so uh, let's now start our uh, and i'll just interrupt dr balla uh, may we allowed to leave the meeting because i have other engagements i committed for 30 minutes and thank you Uh, kindly continue with your technical discussion thank you very much thank you sir so let's now uh, start our uh, technical uh, session and uh, i request uh, my colleague uh, suchismita mantri to continue this session suchismita mantri good afternoon and namaskar to all uh, honorable sir jyoti prakash panigrahi ji a minister to regime and department of odia language literature and culture respected principal secretary dr bishnu pada sethi sir and uh, ranjan das uh, has not yet joined uh, but i extend my uh, gratitude on behalf of odisha state museum for participating in this international webinar organized by jointly by odisha state museum and the heritage consortium patna uh, thank you uh, thank you sir for your kind uh, suggestions and valuable speeches for the development of odisha state museum i also extend my special thanks to all the uh, respected speakers of today's discussion and uh, i welcome them all uh, to present their views and uh, their speeches how we can deal with this uh, pandemic situation and uh, we'll be in touch with uh, uh, them in future also will have their uh, suggestions and um, guidance for our development and uh, overall development of uh, museum during this pandemic and after pandemic also uh, so uh, culture never stops and it uh, it is uh, crucial that museums keep going through especially in the 
face of COVID-19. Museums are more than just places where humanity heritage is preserved, humanity's heritage is preserved and promoted. They are also the key spaces for education, inspiration, and dialogue for the general public. But in this pandemic situation, uh, everywhere the museums are closed and the, uh, the sector of museum is uh, very much affected. Uh, so in order to keeping this in pandemic in view, Odisha State Museum started a series of discussion through virtual mode and invite, invite all museums and museum professionals to come forward and their, uh, share their views, statements and advice and support to cope with this uh, unavoidable pandemic situation. Situation. Uh, so uh, now I request uh, Dr. Anamika uh, Biswas to have their uh, discussion. Before that, I would like to present uh, her short biodata uh, regarding his work and, uh, and his, her experience in this field. And Dr. Anamika Biswas is the Deputy Director at SARC Cultural Center, Colombo. Dr. Biswas is PhD in History of Art from National Museum Institute, New Delhi. She has a working experience of more than 20 years in the field of heritage and cultural, cultural development and management. She initially worked with UNESCO ICOMS project for digital documentation of collections of more than 15 museums. Uh, she has worked on various design, conceptualization and development project for institutions like Bihar Museum Patna, uh, Tansen Museum Madhya Pradesh, uh, Suraj Kund International Craft Mela, Faridabad, International Gita Mahasab Extractor. Um, and she also worked as program director at IGNCA and associate professor and deputy dean at Paul Academy of Fashion, the Fashion of uh, Laureate International Universities Network. And uh, she's having vast experience and, um, and knowledge over all this uh, museum and uh, museum related. Uh, uh, organization. So I request now Madam uh, Dr. Anamika Biswas to uh, give his uh, give her uh, uh, speech on uh, today's topic. Thank you, Madam. Uh, and uh, I must thank all the people who have organized this. I'm thankful and grateful to the Honorable Minister, Honorable uh, uh, Principal Secretary Ji, uh, and the Superintendent of uh, State Museum, Orissa, uh, uh, and um, uh, Director of the State Museum of, uh, uh, I think uh, he's Director of State uh, for Culture, Orissa, uh, Vibhajji, uh, and all of these people uh, who have uh, made this possible. Uh, to come on this uh, platform and discuss this uh, you know, challenge come opportunity. And uh, of course, I agree with the, and I think everybody agrees with this, that the COVID has never happened. The situation has never happened. This situation has actually put this human, whole human race into a reflective mode where we need to sit back. You know, we are pushed to sit, sit back. Let me put it very bluntly, that we have been pushed to sit, sit back and think about what we are doing and what we can do. If this is not there, the normal is not there. What is new normal? So, uh, so that's that's what we are, you know, trying to understand here in the museum field. Museum is certainly about uh, two things: collections and people. If collections are not there, people are not there. If people are not there, then collection is of no use. So, uh, so, so to say, so the the, the museum is about this. And uh, as uh, Principal Secretary G has, uh, you know, uh, very well defined and talked about how uh, Orissa Museum or Orissa Department of Culture has responded to the situation wherein they have gone ahead and created a lot of online exhibitions. They are doing virtual mode and they are trying to do a, a book exhibition as well. So uh, these are the steps we are, you know, right now taking to, uh, to handle this. Uh, you know, a pandemic, handle this situation. So, uh, and as we are going through this, we are learning that this, as even Minister Sir was saying, and even Principal Secretary Sir was saying that we do not know how long it's going to be. So this is very uncertain. So, uh, you know, now we are in uncertain situation. And uh, of course, it's a big, big challenge. And I think this is the, this kind of a situation is when uh, the human race has always come out with very innovative, uh, 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 ideas. These kind of challenges has given us opportunity to create new things 
And this is what, you know, we are here to do right now. So uh, this is, you know, what I believe that, you know, uh, having this uh, situation, doing this side by side, what we have uh, generated or created with our limited resources, but, you know, we, we, they were not handy. Some of them were handy, for, for uh, example. Sir mentioned that uh, there were, you know, 20,000 or 15,000, uh, uh, these uh, manuscripts were digitized. So these things were handy. These were available, digitized. So we could use these things. Uh, so uh, we have used them and we have brought them onto the online platform. This is what we have done. But uh, is this the way? Is this the only way? Is this the planned way? Is this the impactful way? I think this, this discussion is, is, is about that. So if uh, we are not saying that COVID situation will continue forever, but we are saying that can we turn this challenge into an opportunity of a lifetime or a life changing for the museums? So I'm going to share uh, my screen now, which will be talking about, it will help me in uh, explaining. So I'll just show you that. Give me a sec. Uh, as we know that, you know, uh, the traditional role of museum, you know, collecting, preserving, displaying, engaging visitors, research and publication, you know, in-house collaboration with institutions and scholars. This is what we've been doing. This is what a traditional museum is all about. But now it is no more there. The museum is, you know, we have uh, shifted out or we are, you know, shut out from the museums the or visitor is outside the museum now and this is a you know we in, in management terms we call it a box three challenge there's a box three challenge that we do not know what to do with the, without the main component two components are important collection and visitors now collection is there but the visitor is not there so what are we supposed to do in such situations so why why this is you know has happened or why we can we can simply define why you know visitor is outside because of the COVID situation there's a social distancing there is lockdowns restricted you know international and domestic travel and uh, and anyway even if when it opens up you know as phase wise in different uh, cities or different states or different geographies when we are opening up. Uh, we are not, we are saying that uh, most of the authorities are saying you must utilize the moment, the physical moment only if it is necessary. Otherwise, you should not be doing it. So this looks like, you know, uh, for few, it is a necessary activity. Maybe for the research scholars, it's an unnecessary activity. For the designers, it might be a very, you know, a, a crucial activity. Uh, uh, for, you know, museum, museum professionals and staff uh, people, that's a crucial activity that they have to do. But for the visitor, let's come to the visitor, it does not seem like a necessary activity. So it seems that we need to do something about it. We need to you know, look into it, how to deal with this, even when the you know, COVID situation is over, how can we deal with this situation? Uh, current situation, what we have done is, you know, there's a pandemic situation, we have museums, we have collections, we have digitized some part of it, we have some, you know, even in some cases, I have seen uh, that nationally, internationally, globally, uh, museums, they have had some exhibitions already, and they had their photographic, you know, uh, kind of uh, archive. And what they have done with the help of catalog, they have created those exhibitions, that is also there. So what I'm saying that the technology, at a broader term has been utilized to do this people engagement, the visitor engagement, the visitor who is outside the museum. So somehow we are taking museum to, that, uh, the, to the visitor and this is how we are presenting this, uh, you know, ha handling this situation. I would say handling or managing this situation, um, which is, you know, uh, uh, I would say uh, satisfactory till now. And we feel at least uh, the, the connect between the museum and the visitor is maintained. Uh, so what uh, museums have done generally, they have most of the museums, uh, if they are uh, of state level, even district level, they had their website. So they have chosen to go online. They have chosen to use their existing exhibitions, put it them on, online. Uh, for example, I have put two, the, two of them that National Museum have started, you know, museum from home <coughs> and a virtual museum. So both of them have content, which is, you know, uh, available. Uh, some of them they have created, 
for particularly for this situation wherein uh, a doc, uh, commentary is there about some artworks but there again you know uh, very um, isolated you know the each artwork is isolated and it has been talked about um, so the content is is there so content is the exhibitions which have happened in a certain you know uh, backdrop which at uh, a certain context uh, that have been put across uh, and uh, what I feel that the content is there, but the design of the content, the impact of the content would not be the way it was there in the on-site experience, because one, they are not designed. They are not strategically planned. They are, you know, in, in a situation of hurry, we have, we have got this, you know, uh, piece of our, can we have used it? So that's the, that's it, and it's nobody's, you know, uh, fault. We are, we are facing this challenge and we are trying to do our best in this situation. Uh, we are also seeing uh, a lot of free content is available. So a lot of uh, museum, whether it is British Museum, whether it is MoMA, uh, whether it is Louvre, even our National Museum Daily has also started, you know, giving online free courses. They have started giving online free, uh, some eBooks also are present, some catalogs which are, you know, which are actually sold uh, if the museums are open. Those catalogs are available free, free of course. One can you know download those things. So that's these are the you know engagements. This is the current situation how we are engaging the visitor who cannot visit the museum. So this is this time is you know just to um, uh, to uh, nurture this relationship. We are just trying to nurture and hold on to this relationship between museum and visitor through this uh, online. Uh, these are some of the photographs which I have, you know, screenshot uh, I have taken. So uh, some of uh, videos which I have seen, I have gone through. Uh, so what I realize each artifact has been discussed and it has been shown, you know, 360 degrees, it has been shown. It has been talked about how it was collected, what is the material and all this. Uh, but the very important part, it is without context. Each artifact has been, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm, I, there is no intent to talk about any specific museum but this is most of the cases this is the situation even if you go to Louvre, even if you go to british museum if you go to any of these museums they have taken up the artifacts and there is a document uh, there is a you know commentary about the uh, artifact but it does not have you know the whole context around it it's, it doesn't have so it's like you know uh, taking out uh, one thing from a beautiful uh, uh, story and you are giving story with that which uh, I, I, as a, as an artist, so historian, or as as art connoisseur, even a storyteller, I find a uh, uh, little bit lacking in 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 many many you know elements. So we, we need to do something about it. So what we have, this is the opportunity. What you know, the museum and technology and opportunity. What it is providing us, the COVID is providing us this opportunity. Uh, so generally, it is a challenge. But when you uh, look closely it is an opportunity what I see is so uh, we have you know static co content as I mentioned that mo most of the museum have utilized their digitized uh, artifacts and the, they have uh, put it on the as a catalog so one can go through those catalogs and it's a static content it's a 2d image you just can you know look at the image and read their sizes read their you know province and material and all these things those are there then here's some digital books, as I, I was mentioning, some catalogs are already there and they have turned into PDFs and you can download those PDFs, those are available. Uh, mobile, mobile devices, uh, these are, you know, I'm talking about, if I have to say, those are uh, available. If you um, uh, look into the European museums, they have turned into some of the mobile uh, apps where you can go through uh, some uh, museums. Uh, interactivity also, we do not have much interactivity as far as I see in the Asian region, region, uh, region, but I see this is happening somewhere, you know, in the Europe and US, they have started interactivities as well on the, uh, you know, mobile devices or any other device which you are utilizing for your uh, uh, virtual tours. So that is available. And those interactivity are generally game based and, uh, you know, most of them, they are individual uh, and group activities are less, but yes, people are trying to do the, bring in the group activity. And of course, the technology uses asynchronous or synchronous. Synchronous is when you are connected and with the whole, uh, or the whole module or the museum and asynchronous is you download that particular module and you can watch it at your pace whenever you feel like, even if you're connected with on online or not. So these are the, you know, things which are happening right now. And this has, you know, this is also a result, a conclusion that we are put in this situation. Otherwise, I don't think so that this sudden, you know, the graph would have gone that high because what I was today in the morning, I was just updating myself before I give the webinar. So uh, 
there are almost 500 such museums which have which are completely online now there are almost uh, 120 museums which are uh, having exhibition online there are almost you know 60 or 50 museums which are you know giving some kind of interactivity i am talking the, you know across the globe so uh, this push you know the sudden push towards technology has come because of this the challenge of covid and i think it's going to change our life forever when i'm saying our life i mean to say for the museum professionals uh, so uh, now the next is how the museum covid and museum and challenge and opportunity how do i see it and how we should see it as museum professionals uh, I see this as a wonderful opportunity because what um, if I even if I take an example or a case study that uh, we we take one of the state museum okay state museums they are very rich in heritage they have wonderful collections uh, starting from their whether they are historic whether they are anthropological or even the musical instruments you say they have everything they have beautiful collections but uh, what we have right now the present customer who is the present visitor for us that is generally you know from the state or the region. And uh, we, we can we can sometimes we can expect uh, global uh, visitors or international visitors. Especially, I would say these are the people who are, who are you know uh, in search of um, exclusive uh, experience. So they will be coming there. Uh, so that's that is a very limited you know uh, customer uh, base we are looking at. And as principal secretary sir was saying that you know of course uh, government funded uh, we have in India we have lots of or more of the most of the museums are government funded. But what I see the future that museums uh, like abroad or like in Europe, they should also be creating uh, their own uh, revenue when there is when there is an opportunity. Why shouldn't they? They should not, they should be and they should become, you know, independent in that sake. Of course, there's a there's the need of push of technology and funding in the beginning. But I see as a future, this is going to be uh, very, very lucrative for the, the museums, for the state governments. Because once a museum uh, with the appropriate technology, appropriately planned strategic technology goes online, it will have global audiences. So there are, you know, almost the, the age group which is defined for internet user is from 15 to 55 is the minimum right now. And there are, you know, billions of people across the globe, which would be, you know, uh, curious to see what is, uh, you know, um, uh, tribal art in Orissa, what is the, you know, Kalinga art in Orissa, uh, what was Ashokan period or Buddhist art in uh, in, uh, in Orissa. So, uh, but we are not, but they, they can't come and they can't visit, okay? And all of them cannot visit even the COVID is gone. Uh, let's be very, very practical about it. So we are bringing this, this, uh, this COVID situation is bringing, uh, showing us the future or showing us a bigger picture, I would say, that we should be able to tap this global audiences by going online. But by, by going online doesn't mean what we are doing currently, we should be continuing that. I'll come to that, what we should be doing or what are the methodologies. What else I see as a future or the box three experiment is we will get if the you know state uh, state museum also they start uh, this kind of uh, projects where they want to use a lot of technology they will get a lot of sponsor advertiser travel and tourism is one of them they that can be a good uh, you know collaborator which can be coming up because that is going to enhance their sector uh, secondly the IT giants we know Google Google is is really you know big they ha also have their own Google uh, Center culture center online. Uh, they have more than 200 museums right now on their site and they can be you know a win-win situation or kind of mous which which are you know fruitful for both the technology and for the museums and these partnerships are you know i'm not saying something which is not happened which cannot happen it is going on and we can do it so this is the you know uh, the the basic uh, baseline of our future how we do it so that i can see what uh, value proposition we are bringing is that uh, from, you know, we ha do have regular displays in the museums and uh, brick and mortar museums, they, uh, they are fantastic buildings, uh, some of them heritage buildings, so we cannot do much about them, we cannot change their displays daily. And we all are aware that mo in most of the museums, more than 60% of the collection lies in the storehouses. Now, this is a wonderful opportunity to bring that collection online and show them the light of day, even in the virtual mode. So we will have at least a museum collection available and visible 
to to uh, to all the visitors so that's a wonderful thing it means right now only 20 to 30 percent uh, you know a collection is visible we we know about it this also brings a better opportunity for research and publication because most of the artifacts they are they have never seen the day, the light and they have never been written about they have been never researched about uh, so this is where I say that from regular to we say continuous display. Now, when we are doing a uh, brick and mortar display, we are bound by a lot of things, logistic, money, time, uh, which, you know, actually gets reduced once we, we start, you know, uh, technological uh, uh, advancement. So that can be reduced and we can have now from regular display, we can move to continuous display. When I'm saying continuous display, I mean that we can always uh, have uh, uh, exhibitions or you know these kind of uh, content uh, the fresh refreshed updated within you know a fortnight within a week within a 10 days that we can do from you know that uh, a visitor who is used to watching one thing he gets every time he comes to the the museum website or the virtual museum is able to see something new so that is very much possible this you know this challenge brings this opportunity to us this is the rarest of the opportunity for the collection for the museum lovers and for the art lovers Exhibitions, as I have already mentioned, these exhibitions, if you go in the pick and mortar, they are, you know, planned, it, it takes time. We all know it takes time. It's it maybe six months or eight months for one exhibition. We'll prepare and we'll then come down to a 14 days exhibition. Where in this case, we might, you know, uh, prepare for an exhibition for six months, but that exhibition can be, you know, uh, can be repurposed, can be, you know, rearranged with different themes with less of time and can be, you know, created through this multimedia and other, you know, uh, thematic displays. So it is like, you know, uh, we have ready material and it's up to a curator or a designer of the, uh, the, the, uh, the exhibition who can, you know, uh, from the existing digitized material or ex existing exhibitions, digital exhibition, they can recreate new and newer, uh, you know, work. So uh, whatever it is, I'm saying it cannot be generated without the digitization of the collections. So uh, very simply, if we say for the brick and mortar uh, museum, we need collections. So for virtual museum, we definitely need the very basic digitization of each and every artwork has to be done properly. That has to be the baseline of it. So if uh, a museum doesn't have collection, a museum doesn't exist. Similarly, a virtual museum cannot exist if we do not have this digitized uh, you know, artifacts. These are very important. Uh, so we are saying in regular present situation, of course, in the present, we are not in living in that present anymore. So there were seminars, conferences, but I think here we can have global collaboration as you know, since now we see that webinars are happening across the globe, that can be, that can happen. Of course, this also brings in very interesting uh, um, opportunity that as Sir was mentioning that Kalinga and Ashoka, uh, so Buddhism is, is you know, so you look at uh, Asia and it is across the Asia, uh, Buddhism, and it has variety of shades, the artwork, the, the culture, the even everything, every nuance is different in every region when it, when it moves out. So if we have global collaboration, see, just imagine that a collaboration between uh, Kyoto Museum and Urissa State Museum for Buddhism, wow we will have a wonderful exhibition. I'm just giving an example. So, because Buddhism is, is a core concept and we can talk about Zen Buddhism and how the development is happening, how the art form is changing, how the aesthetic is changing, many things can be done. So these collaborations, global co collaborations are very much easily available and you know possible once we have this you know basic digitization, basic we should have these uh, strategic plans in place for years and for months and for every week that what we are going to do next. But first we need to do the digitization and we need to create those, you know, that whole uh, collection uh, virtually for ourselves. So of course it is a right now analog, we are going digital if we have to say the you know, value chain architecture you're talking about. And competency, if we say it, so most of our museums, they have uh, curation expertise and um, yeah. that what is uh, required uh, so like i just you know often i talked about in kyoto the how the buddhism would have you know in zen how it would have worked if you're you know comparing or bringing to exhibition what happened to buddhism in kalinga how the buddhism was you know uh, changed ashoka so these these things can can these kind of you know um, interesting ideas they can, this can only come from the curators so we need we do have these expertise uh, across uh, india so we should utilize this uh, then we have well researched documented artifacts and of course they need to put it on in the digital format uh, what we need 
in to do this we need the you know technology expertise uh, we need uh, technology uh, infrastructure we need the technology um, you know support system all this is required in house in the museums this has to be part of the you know when we are you know from now onwards when i'm looking at this this uh, case study i'm talking actually this is at a strategic level at a planning level at you know level of you know minister sir or principal secretary sir that they have to bring this policies when they are making the policies these are needs to be um, added or these need to be addressed uh, so this has to go into the our uh, allocation of budget when we are doing you know budgeting for uh, uh, the museum purposes and of course i uh, i am as far as i understand i am not wrong that it will be a yielding proposition because uh, uh, louvre just started uh, going online and within 3 months it had hit more than i think uh, 5 million people um, so in beginning uh, they have given uh, opportunity to see uh, have a visit to the museum which is free of cost and by now they have started giving uh, you know um, a kind of paid subscription you may choose one exhibition which is for 15 minutes of a certain collection or a certain you know theme and you have to pay a certain you know whatever euro you pay and you can see that so that is there at the same time this also reminds me apart from the financial aspect and the budgeting aspect of uh, bringing this technology online uh, two days back europe has come out with a complete uh, set of policies for the content uh, and copyright for the museums in the digital sphere i think we need to look into that also if uh, principal secretary sir is listening so this is one of the area which he will be <laughs> needing to add because uh, we can't uh, give let it go this is our uh, patent this is our heritage so it cannot be freely available to be utilized anyhow so the copyright uh, policies are coming up possibly they are in collaboration with unesco as far as i read it was european union which has come up with some of the policies so we really need to look into those policies and try to amend and bring our set of policies in place so this is the future what i see for you know covid museum as the, uh, the museums uh, after covid as challenge and opportunity so opportunity is huge vast and technology is going to create uh, this opportunity and having these few things in place we will be able to go ahead uh, so uh, what we have seen uh, you know what has happened due to this uh, uh, digitization or you know coming in the open this uh, online uh, um, online collections we have come to know our uh, limitations or the mistakes which we were making so one of them which we have come across is a lot of photoshop has been done to the artifacts uh, it's across the globe it's not for any museum certainly but it is i'm talking global scenario so this has happened uh, so, but it is not done by somebody to uh, please himself or herself but it was needed to give the reality this brings another uh, aspect of uh, you know um, technology where uh, possibly we don't see research scholars or people who wants to write and research on these artifacts would be uh, truly interested to look at the photo or the online uh, artworks so we still have that set of um, people who will be visiting museums and definitely they will be because they would like to see the the, the, the artifact whether it's a 2d or it's a 3d whether it's a document the manuscript or it's a uh, artifacts say a vessel or a pot or a you know sword they would like to have a look at it they would like to have look and feel around it so that you know uh, opportunity and challenge both is uh, in front of us of course this you know uh, when um, uh, lack of community uh, community participation is very much visible in most of the museums but i'm reading the reviews of which have gone to online uh, the if you if i look at it they have most of them they have gone or via youtube channel where they are giving the you know uh, commentaries they are putting documentaries and there are you know streaming live streaming so a lot of you know um, interaction is happening later on you know a lot of uh, visitors are giving their comments their feedback later on uh, and um, that is you know that is what is needed to be happening simultaneously when the live streaming is happening so this is one area which we need to uh, work on uh, when we are when we are going uh, to, uh, to towards the technology so when we are creating this kind of live streaming we are creating these exhibitions so how we strategize these or design these uh, 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 exhibitions or these venues that the visitor gets the excitement gets that experience of community participation when he is sitting there 
So uh, when he's even not in the museum, so I I I, I always related with if I if means uh, when you go to uh, Louvre museum and you try to see Mona Lisa, uh, one that it is barricaded and you can't you know see her closely, but there's a there's a crowd there's a crowd around her, and uh, that brings a lot of you know uh, curiosity, a lot of excitement in the in the uh, viewer that why people are watching her and what is so great about her. Maybe there is something. Maybe there is nothing. But that you know that curiosity is very important for the visitor. For for somebody to have more and more questions about it, more and more enthusiasm about it, that community participation. How can we bring to this uh, technology oriented platform? That's the challenge right now. We this is what I'm seeing. If I'm when I'm reviewing all these you know uh, museums, what they are doing currently. Uh, isolation is another thing because you know uh, technology as uh, even as the as uh, you know social media or even as game for most of the people it has brought isolation you know we see youngsters they are they are isolated they sit with the mobile and even the family all everybody is sitting with the mobile and they're just busy with that and nobody's talking to each other uh, that's that's not the community we are looking at in future and that's going to be very uh, yeah, unsatisfactory human race as I see. So I think we need to uh, look into this situation also that how we break this isolation. We don't uh, bring something new or addition which you know enhances this isolation further. Uh, uh, I have already mentioned the lack of interaction with the in in community. Community in the sense one that I said as the the the, the visitors community. At the second time, I'm saying that the community uh, as as a family, as you know, otherwise who are next to you sitting. They are related or they are in the physical atmosphere and they might not be, you know, uh, with the same interest. But of course, that in interaction is also uh, gets uh, impacted if technology is uh, uh, all around you. Are, you are uh, so much around the technology that you have forgotten about the human race that is happening currently. Uh, and the very important part is the impact of screen usage. We really need to look into it for, for, from the perspective of a young user to the, uh, the senior most uh, who is using the you know, screen. Because now we are not realizing, but pretty soon we are going to get those uh, you know studies which will come out and say that because of the screen uses, the eye has got deteriorated, the brain is not functioning well, and many other things. And you know even eye hand coordination is going to go for a toss, as far as I understand. A lot of things are going to you know when you read this, when you read this you know current studies, it it is indicating that we are going to get these kind of results very soon. So we need to see that also that how do we reduce it yet we achieve our objective mm, the methodology uh, right right now is you know the definitely is to design it not just you know pick up the content or exhibition existing and just put it online uh, that's not uh, we would i would never like to call it uh, you know uh, technology oriented museum or innovative museum that is just you know you're just changing the medium a platform so we need to design specifically for every artifact or every collection, how we are going to present it to the viewer. Uh, one way which we have seen, I have seen the gamification has come up in the museum uh, sphere, whether it is, it was on-site more of the, the thing we have seen in the on-site uh, and off-site it is not that much popular. That has, it has not come as yet. So gamification has led to something which is called the ludicization. Uh, it's a very uh, you know, new term. Uh, the, what is happening in this case is that uh, the viewer is not interested in the artifact or the collection. He's interested in winning the game. Okay, this is one of the studies, studies and statistics which I'm sharing with you. So these are, you know, some of the challenges I'm talking about. So uh, even when you're gamifying uh, the collection, you have to be very careful that how far you're taking it to that that level that the viewer has forgotten about the collection or the objective and he's merely interested in you know uh, getting the treasure or you know killing his enemy uh, getting the numbers or getting whatever points or awards and all that so this has to be seen this is one of the technology challenge which has been discussed currently in the global scenario so if you're going for gamification we need to have uh, a very clear-cut idea about it what we are doing in this case uh, of course, when we are looking at, uh, I'm sorry, I'm taking too much of time and I hope I'll be able to finish in the next five to seven minutes. Uh, so, uh, of course, when we are coming to museum technology and opportunity, we are able to bring the audience at the center. So whatever happens in the mortar, brick and mortar museum, uh, the, the exhibition, once they, they have to stay for longer, we can't change them. Uh, we don't have uh, uh, that uh, 
time and that resource to you know just update them immediately so here we can get this opportunity to update the uh, museum uh, to change the collection not just not just by you know digitizing it but i am here i am saying that we should use artificial intelligence while we are using this collections or we are displaying or we are promoting this on on, on the museums in the museums so in the museum spheres once you have this uh, it is it, you can you can use it anyhow so you know what your viewer is watching the, the, every viewer can have their own set of you know um, exhibition or collections coming to them when they want to do it so this is this can bring the audience into the center so uh, if i have to equate it what we see uh, on online you know if you are doing a purchase for example if i'm on amazon and i'm trying to buy say uh, a hair oil or a shampoo so what happens eventually he it takes up all my you know uh, data that what kind of shampoo i'm looking for a herbal shampoo i'm looking for a 200 grams of a you know bottle i'm looking which is you know made up of that certain herbal i'm looking for you know whatever dry hair or oily hair it takes all the data points and then it all starts throwing all those shampoos all those you know products it has in that category so this is what you are expecting ai should be doing for our museums and it is very much possible it is not impossible ai is doing it for everything so we can use it so it can bring the technology can bring the uh, audience into the center and i believe once uh, this kind of ai is implemented uh, we will have much more lucrative business much more revenue uh, much better interaction with the visitor uh, then the next thing is that uh, the guides you know uh, designer and you know design assessment that's very important like what studies i am uh, sharing uh, i believe in in global space these things are happening that whatever uh, of course when you have online these activities and they are backed by uh, uh, nice uh, programs you get your data that analytics you already get uh, so this these kind of designs if they are uh, they are online whatever we have created a game we have created a, a online exhibition or a musical webinar or whatever it will give the uh, assessment and uh, you know but only thing is that we should have to put our evaluation programs in right with right parameters and criteria so the designer is not only the upfront what you see as a ui or ux but the designer or the program uh, has to be done at the back end also that it is giving you the accurate data which can define your next step so the technology is not only what we see technology has to be you know worked upon at the back end also that what i'm talking about here that when we are strategizing and planning we are not only looking at the looks of or the ux or ui of the the, the collection we are also looking at the back end what do i want out of this exhibition in the end if i have more musical uh, you know instruments so what kind of you know data i want to have so i can create my next exhibition so this has to be created within the programming uh, and then we are saying that uh, lead uh, of course this is uh, you know actually both are related when i'm saying assessment evaluation and if you have the accurate uh, these parameters uh, given into the programming and analytics you will get uh, uh, end result that what is going to be successful in the next you know 10 days when you have come up with another exhibition you know your theme you know your year you know your visitor you know its profile everything so uh, this is you know this is what uh, technology is giving in our hand technology is giving the whole uh, you know uh, visitors profile uh, a kind of an encyclopedia to us it's handing over to us that you should do this and museum will be popular you should do this museum will be able to make more revenue i'm talking right now online the same data can be utilized for uh, you know on site once you have a successful uh, exhibition you you will know that if i created on site also what kind of a crowd i'm going to get what kind of a numbers i'm going to get so this is very much you know business and technology happening together it's it's a you know first time in culture field i think i'm i'm talking like this but of course a culture also needs lots of funding uh as i said that we we should be you know this is the opportunity we should use article artificial intelligence we should use uh, storytelling and storytelling can be manipulated and created multiple times once you have uh, digitized uh, you know content you give it to a curator give it to a software uh, designing team they can create multiple stories and when i'm saying multiple stories it's a very simple thing which i'm saying 
uh, as an art historian and a museum person, I know that when we create this a history museum, this uh, anthropological museum, this, this gallery has a musical uh, uh, instrument, but uh, we do not relate the 360 degree of uh, an artifact. Now, for example, if I have to say a musical instrument is made of, you know, gear, gear se bana hua hai. so it's, a, you know, that uh, aapka, uh, which uh, uh, you know um, which community has started it which community used to use it what kind of songs they were you know singing as sir was mentioning now the gallery is having uh, you know some uh, the the uh, native music is is going on folk music is going on in the in the in, in the gallery but do we know what are the instrument used in that do we know are they you know and that, that is very important the music is there uh, is it made of their native you know some vegetable are they dried it dried up and then they created with their own hands it's a handcrafted uh, what kind of you know notes it can it can play uh, what kind of songs it has been it has been written you know interestingly even even some of the songs are written for the musical instruments which you know very few people will be aware about and will love to know that so this is what i'm talking about that each artifact itself has so many stories to tell we only see one story. We only present one story. So visitor is limited by that one story. So each artifact can have its basic art aesthetics, it, its history, its you know, um, its uh, anthropological relation, its material relation, its you know, whole uh, the the songs and literature related to it, the community which has uh, has been using it, uh, the new forms of it. So there are multiple things for each artifact. So that is what I'm saying that we can create multiple stories with one artifact if it is digitized. Uh, so we are saying that uh, graphic user interface, I would like to relate it with the very basic thing that adaptability is very important. And when we are talking about adaptability, I'm simply ignoring the youth because they can adapt to any, uh, any kind of technology, but I'm talking about people who are uh, challenged by the technology. So when the, this technology design is happening, when the user interface is happening, one has to be very careful that uh, how the elderly or people who are technologically challenged, they will be able to use it. That has to be our you know, key uh, when we are looking at it. That's the opportunity or the challenge. So we can bring in more and more people, those who are not using technology. Interaction mode, of course, we would like to have interactive modes where, you know, uh, we do have chatbots right now, you know, for even you go to any of the college website or even the museum website, the, the chatbot starts talking about what do you want, what do you want to say and all these things. But uh, I would rather like to have, you know, more um, human interaction there. I don't know how will it happen, but I think that's more important being with technology and robots. Uh, I don't think so we're going to survive more. So <laughs> we need to do something about it. I don't know what we'll be doing. But of course, that's the opportunity we have that how human or that curation or the people who are skilled in history, who are skilled in technology or skilled in all this can be brought in and can be made the part of this interactive modes. Uh, time of rotation, of course, we have seen uh, that we have uh, large audiences. Uh, once we have gone online, we have got the data and we know that it is uh, there. But of course, when we go strategically, we will have a better idea for what we have more users and for what we can create more users. Uh, customized evolution strategy, of course, I have mentioned in my previous slide that we need to do it uh, at the back end as well. Uh, I think I have covered all of them, uh, apart from that, that, you know, currently uh, the virtual reality, augmented reality, immersive experience and holographic projections, all of these technologies have been used on the on-site museums. So we have this opportunity to put it in the online area. We didn't get, I haven't seen any museum doing uh, on online, even till today, 11 o'clock, I was trying to look, look into this. So we have opportunity. I don't know holographic projection is possible or not, but yes, uh, whatever we need to do this technology based, uh, you know, these are the areas which way we can go ahead. Uh, I, I appreciate when, you know, uh, Principal Secretary sir mentioned that, you know, museums are places of learning. And I also see this as in the same way. So for the younger crowd, the younger when I'm saying, I mean to say the age six to 12, they need to have, you know, a very uh, strategically planned play, uh, learning through or, you know, visiting a museum through play method. So they should have that, uh, the, 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 strategy, the strategy should be that they feel like they're into a, into a game, the games which they play. I'm not talking about the games of, you know, treasure hunting. I want to say the play games they play. So we have to look into those games which they love to play, which brings eye and hand coordination. We do have this kind of, a, uh, you know, um, uh, 
technology available but the gestures are related to your um, your cognitive uh, learning and then uh, can be you know uh, it, it eventually enhances your uh, you know cognitive uh, development so those kind of you know tools needs to be brought in for this 6 to 12 age because this is what they need to do they need to do cognitive development they need to do the hand uh, motor skill development in coordination with the cognitive one so so ma'am uh can you uh, shorten your uh, speeches uh, two more uh, speakers are there so no, just this is just one minute i just just, just oh, be ending okay ma'am okay, ma okay. thank you so this is it uh, for uh, you know for the special uh, you know target if i have to choose one target i have to discuss about these are some of the examples which uh, were uh, used uh, for my case studies or i have got data from uh, these are the two examples and this is over and uh, that was my last slide actually uh, so thank you if you have any questions you can ask please i'm so sorry for taking too much of time but i think uh, i'm too excited to talk about it thank you madam if anybody has uh, any questions maybe we can uh, take uh, one question or two uh, they can unmute their mic and uh, ask talk Uh, uh can i ask one question uh, sangeeta this side hello sangeeta from my end it is a yes uh, let's yeah, yeah. decide yeah good afternoon ma'am uh, uh talking about the the ai uh, thing uh, i think it is uh, ai is uh, getting very popular in the west but uh, um, here in india we are still just talking about it like and here it is going to take a lot of time before anybody comes up with the real workable um, ai platform uh, which can work in the uh, heritage sector uh, so uh, because uh, culture and heritage is a very uh, specialized field and uh, some of us museum professionals will uh, also have to be techno technologically uh, skilled Uh, so that uh, we have some basic training in ai and that kind of advanced training is not going to be given to us very soon and uh, ai is uh, still not part of uh, our art and heritage curriculum and we don't know uh, when they are going to teach us uh, in educational institutions so do you think there is a lack of understanding uh, what is required among the uh, educational policy makers in india uh thank you sangeeta for bringing this point uh, thanks a lot because uh, if uh, i am i miss uh, principal secretary ji is here and i think this is a very good platform to add that the museology or any subject uh, uh, can never be can uh, never survive long term now without the technology so we have to have change in curriculum uh, and definitely we need to add technology see i i i studied i completed my masters in year 2000 and uh, i was fortunate enough i i got opportunity to work with you know it projects and it companies so that's why i'm aware about what is happening in the it but everyone is not fortunate enough or you know experimental enough that they will jump from culture to it so i think this is a very valid point that we need to we need to put it in the curriculum itself that it is a must and these are the areas like you know ux design ui design you know nif and id they are teaching it okay nif and nid they are definitely teaching it iit has i think iit kharagpur has or roorkee has just started design you know right, right now the design uh, uh, day before yesterday i was seeing one of the posts that they have started a design department there so iit's design department they do have they do have technology in them but interestingly they do not have museum museology there Yeah. So <laughs> that's a rare combination, you know. So physiology and technology, there is no such content yet in the market. Right. Uh, but but there's a lot of scope. There's a lot. There's a lot of scope. There's a, there's a lot of scope. And uh, you know, I personally wrote to the head of department who has just started this uh, that uh, why don't you start mesology with this? Because this sector needs you know technology and technology needs mesology. So let's have it. Uh, I am I am I am fighting on my individual level, and I think this is a good platform that we can raise this uh, issue and very valid point right now. Thank you, Singhi. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your answer. Is there any question for ma'am? Or we uh, go to the next, madam? 
thank you so much, madam, for your elaborate discussion on the topic COVID museum and challenges. In future, we'll be in touch with you for your uh, valuable suggestion and uh, guidance. Thank you, madam, from Thank Moses State Museum and uh, Department of Odia Language, Literature and Culture. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Mahajan is not with us right now. Uh, we are having the recorded version of uh, Arvind Mahajan ji. So we can uh, move on to Gandhi Mati ji. Welcome, madam. Uh, Mrs. J.M. Gandhi Mati has a MA in History, B.Sc. in Geology, and B.D. from the University of Madras. She has undergone museum leadership training conducted by the Department of Culture, Government of India, in collaboration with the British Museum UK in 2012. And she was sponsored by the British Museum London twice to participate in the International Leadership Program in 2017 and Legacy Program in 2018. She is a member of ASAS, European Association for South Asian Studies. She is the author of two published uh, books published by the Department of Museum and Several Researches, etc. And uh, is now editor of uh, 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 conservation and geology section of Government of Museum, Chennai. So I uh, um, now invite Gandhi Mati uh, to have, his, uh, have her uh, topic. Welcome, madam. Nine zero nine three. Okay. Uh, very good evening to everybody. I'm honored to participate in today's uh, discussion on the topic COVID challenges faced by um, museums in India. So I express my heartfelt uh, thanks uh, to the organizers and officials of Government Museum of Odisha for giving me this opportunity, especially Dr. Bhagyalipi Malla ma'am, Mrs. Uh, Shushmita Mantri and Mr. Vivash Kumar. So we all are experiencing this terrible worldwide pandemic called COVID, hoping and praying that it would go away. The first case of COVID-19 in India was reported on 30 January 2020 from Kerala. So lockdowns were announced in Kerala on 23rd March last year and in the rest of the country on 25th March. So infection rates have started to drop in September along with the number of new and active cases. Um, the second wave beginning in March 2021 was much larger than the first with shortage of vaccines, hospital beds, oxygen cylinders and other medicines in all parts of the country. By late April, India led the world in new and active cases. On 30th April 2021, it became the first country to report over 400,000 new cases in a 24-hour period. So during the second wave of pandemic, nationwide lockdown was not imposed and it was statewide or localized. Phased unlocking was announced starting June in Delhi, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh and the number of other states. Education and academy, economy of a country have been severely affected because of the complete and partial lockdowns announced due to COVID. COVID-19 is having an influence on museums and the communities they serve all across the world with people being asked to stay at home and mass gatherings being disallowed. We know that museums are more than just repositories for humanity's past. They are learning, they are important places for learning, inspiration and conversation. Regardless of their size, location or position, museums have numerous challenges, including safeguarding of their exhibits, guaranteeing the safety and health of their workers, dealing with financial issues and maintaining public engagement during these lockdowns. Unavailability of staff for carrying out the routine works, especially the care for their collections in the galleries and storage is a major challenge. Museums are not only gener not generating revenue, but they are also vulnerable when closed. Security and support for the staff has to be managed with utmost care. With the guidelines from government, museum administration is taking necessary actions like sanitizing the premises, arranging vaccination camps for the staff, propaganda of health measures, etc., in preparation for reopening of museums. In the meanwhile, museums are becoming more resilient, as uh, Anamika Ma'am has told. They are becoming more resourceful and innovative to serve their communities. They are embracing new technologies such as virtual guided tours. Facebook and Instagram content, podcasts, webinars, and open access internet platforms such as Google Meet and Zoom conferences. In fact, today's program is also an example for that. 
so the previous as the previous speakers have already discussed about these topics and particularly anamika ma'am she has uh, elaborately uh, uh, spoken about the techno technologies so uh, uh, i think uh, so being a curator of um, uh, two sections I, in my museum i'm going to restrict my talk to the numerous challenges faced during these tough times in taking care of our collections okay i shall also briefly discuss um a few projects which are completed successfully during the partial lockdown period i hope my lecture will give some ideas and motivation for museum fraternity to cope with their challenges which they find in their museums and cultural institutions uh, let me share the screen now Give me a minute. So I shall be briefly discussing the reorganization works carried out in the zoology section galleries of the museum since I'm holding additional charge as the zoology section curator. And uh, I am also going to talk about the conservation of uh, Raja Ravi Verma paintings in our collection, which are done during March and April, 2021, very recently. So before that, a brief introduction about Government Museum, Chennai, popularly known as the Central Museum. During uh, its inception, the Madras Museum was uh, called as uh, Central Museum. Okay. So it is the oldest, second oldest museum in India, the first being uh, Indian Museum, Kolkata. It was a presidential museum covering collections from entire South India. Started in 1851 AD with the collection of geological specimens, it is now a unique collection of archaeological and other treasures going beyond Tamil Nadu, like the Buddha sculptures and Indus collections from the Northwest, Amaravati sculptures from Andhra Pradesh, and Roman coins found in India. Its collection of bronzes, particularly belonging to the Darasaram school, is internationally acclaimed as perhaps the best in the world. The Adichanalur skulls stored in the museum compare with the mummies of Egypt in regard to their historical and anthropological value. The source material in the museum enables some of its curators like George Biddy and Thurston, and also many scholars to research and produce treaties of great value and significance. Surgeon General Edward Green Balfour, who assumed his position as the first officer in charge of museum, was a medical professional, like his successors, Captain J. Mitchell and Surgeon uh, Bidi. Uh, so the full-time superintendent started with Dr. Thurston. They live on by their books even today. For example, Castes and Tribes of South India, written by Dr. Edgar Thurston, is still a reference work for anybody who wants to refer to anything in this field. Dr. A. Ayyapan became the first Indian superintendent of the museum. So in this museum, several world-renowned Indian personalities like Dr. C. Sivaramamurthy, Dr. S. Paramashivan, T. N. Ramachandran, and others have also served in the capacity of curators and made memorable contributions in their respective fields. Known within national and international circles for its scholarly publications, in history, biology, and anthropology, and visited by hundreds of thousands of inter Indian visitors annually, the Madras Museum has impressive intellectual and popular reach, according to curator Ayyapan. In 1951, he has mentioned this in his uh, uh, article. So by the late 1890s, the museum was described as the official showplace of Madras city. Presently, the Department of Museums under Government of Tamil Nadu manages the premier government museum, Chennai, apart from 23 district museums in various districts of Tamil Nadu. All these museums are multipurpose in nature with various collection sections like archaeology, numismatics, art, anthropology, geology, botany, zoology, and the Children's Museum, apart from supporting sections like design and display, education, and chemical conservation sections. The uniqueness of Chennai Museum is it's, it is spread out in six buildings in a vast campus surrounded by old trees and lush vegetation. You can find hundreds of fruit eating bats, which are also known as flying foxes in the museum gardens. Surprising to find them in the middle of the city, which is always busy with traffic. So let me show the um, overview uh, model, which shows the 
number of buildings, six buildings. So, so this is uh, the museum theater. It is based on the Global Theater of London. So we have uh, several uh, cultural programs uh, conducted in the museum theater all throughout the year. Now it's empty. So this is another view of the museum and our major uh, uh, visitors are the school children. So this is the National Art Gallery. So these are all heritage structures, buildings. Uh, this building has been uh, renovated completely. So it has been uh, lying uh, uh, under uh, renovation for nearly a decade. So now it's ready for uh, reorganization or uh, reopening. So this is the massive structure, the National Art Gallery. So it, how it originally housed the Ravi Verma paintings about which I'm going to talk to you about later on. So, this is the uh, old uh, view of the Central Museum, as it was called in at that time. So the impressive heritage structure, the buildings, you can, it's really a marvel. The Indo-Saransanic structure, architecture, uh, Henry Ruin is the architect. So this is the new one, I mean the same in the recent photo. This is the Connemara Library, public library. So you can see the impressive uh, uh, stained glass and the beautiful ornate designs in the ceiling. So this extension in, is into the anthropological galleries of our museum. So this is the anthropology gallery view with a beautiful stained glass. And the next building is the uh, bronze gallery. Okay, the bronzes are, you know, very world famous uh, bronze galleries. So this is one view. The other one is with the um, Children's Museum. It's a later addition, but still a very uh, uh, vibrant place, always thronged by children, school children. So those are the models. And the, the robotic dinosaur in our uh, geological galleries. Another view of the uh, bronze gallery. I'll be talking about the bronzes also. So the conservation section was in fact um, established for the conservation of bronzes. So these are some of the world famous uh, bronzes. Sorry, I'm, I have to rush through fast um, because uh, it's very difficult to show all the uh, photos. And so this is the uh, conservation section. So let me briefly introduce about the history of the conservation section. So as a direct result of the 1878 Treasure Trove Act, which insisted that objects found anywhere under the ground in India could be collected by the museums where they were best preserved. Madras Museum was loaded with hundreds of bronzes unearthed while digging for constructions or plowing the fields. Overwhelmed by the sheer amount of such findings, gravely, the then superintendent had written to the government as early as 1928 that a laboratory is badly needed for the chemical treatment of bronzes and it will be convenient to utilize a vacant former Muslim restaurant building for the purpose. Uh, so that's the chemical conservation laboratory was established in uh, 1930 at Chennai, which is the first museum conservation laboratory in India. Uh, in Asia also it is said. So Dr. Paramazivan was the first full-time chemist employed to conserve and restore the bronze sculptures which are being afflicted by bronze disease. He devised the electrolytic treatment method to remove the corrosion products. Um, we know about the... Uh, yeah, see, I wanted to show a few uh, instruments which are still, uh, uh, which are, we are still using in our laboratory. This is a, the hair hygrometer to record the um, humidity in the air. Some of them are museum pieces. Those uh, equipments, we are having it as museum piece. This is the original uh, um, motor panel, electro electric panel which uh, was used to operate the electrolytic tanks 
you know, for uh, uh, giving the electrolytic treatment of the bronzes. So it is very interesting and fascinating to see all those uh, uh, equipments and the conditions under which they were, uh, you know, able to uh, restore and uh, produce so many bronzes under their custody. So this is the uh, uh, new, uh, or uh, it's not new, it was in, in 1964, this one was constructed. This is the building which at present we are using the chemical conservation uh, research laboratory it was given that uh, status uh, as it is uh, uh, as such institution so this is uh, one of the visitors from metropolitan museum uh, and we have a lot of visitors coming in because this was the first uh, museum laboratory to be established in india and so a lot of people come to our uh, laboratory uh, to study and do research and i don't know if you might have uh, heard about uh, Sanchita Balachandran. She uh, has uh, extensive, she was a Fulbright scholar and she studied, uh, she stayed in the museum and studied for six months uh, about the conservation, history of the conservation laboratory. Uh, so I think it's, it's, I'm really very uh, proud to be uh, uh, occupying the space which was once occupied by great doyens like Doc Parmashivan. Uh, so this, let me, share another one. sorry okay. uh, are you able to hear me i'm sorry uh, i'm getting some hello I'm able to hear you clearly ma'am yes ma'am you are audible, audible. okay, okay, okay. I, I had a disturbance okay so no matter. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So, um, okay, uh, this is the uh, zoological section uh, of which I'm also holding uh, additional charge as the curator. So we have these impressive uh, uh, whale skeleton, okay, suspended from the ceiling. It was washed ashore in Bangalore in 1960. So this is, uh, the, I'm just going through uh, quickly, uh, the snakes uh, gallery, the reptile section, and the turtle section, the marine turtles, you can see the crocodiles stocked as specimens on the wall. And this is the foreign animals gallery. So this is the mammal gallery. So you can see all the, and I want to say one interesting fact is that uh, Madras Museum once had uh, about 300 uh, live uh, wild animals and birds in its campus. So the originally the zoo was in the Madras Museum campus only. So uh, that is a reason for the name, you know, uh, in the local uh, terms, Tamil, they used to call museum as Setha College, meaning a dead college. And uh, the zoo was there kicking with the live animals. So and the comparison was uh, set the college, college. At that time, the museum was known as a college by the local people. So it, uh, you, you can understand the educational value of museums. Uh, so some of these um, specimens exhibited here once were alive in the museum. Uh, very sorry to see them stuck here, but still. We had very good taxidermists. Uh, world renowned taxidermists. Taxidermists are people who work, uh, who do the stuffing and uh, who take care of the uh, conservation or uh, preservation of the zoological specimens. So, this is one uh, huge uh, skeleton of a male elephant, which is about 11 feet. Uh, a very huge specimen, maybe a freak, I don't know. So, the, it had killed about uh, three people before it was finally caught and shot. So it has been uh, displayed in the museum. So our taxidermy is why I'm telling all this is because, you know, uh, during uh, um, ordinary times, it is uh, very difficult to do uh, uh, conservation or preservation in situ. 
in the galleries because uh, small objects can be removed to the uh, laboratory but uh, the huge uh, uh, exhibits like these uh, suspended uh, uh, skeletons and other uh, artifacts they cannot be removed it's it, it's a very laborious process and so uh, this uh, during this pandemic during this partial lockdown it was a great opportunity for us for uh, tax dummies and for us maintenance people to uh, for curators to you know uh, do this kind of works so I think uh, it is an opportunity for us so without any disturbance of uh, visitors and uh, without uh, we causing any uh, disturbance to them. Uh, so it is a nice opportunity to take care of all the uh, long pending works which can be done uh, during this time. So we are uh, doing a lot of uh, maintenance works, cleaning works in the zoological sections. So you can see all the, um, it's going on. This is an ongoing work now. So the uh, all the dust and dirt have been cleaned and bleached, and now uh, the skeleton is going to really have a beautiful look. And uh, we are uh, uh, very happy to uh, invite our visitors to uh, see the new uh, uh, elephant. See, again, this is another elephant skeleton, which is uh, being uh, uh, conserved by uh, one of our uh, technical staff. This is the uh, huge uh, ivory tusk with the mirror. All these works we are able to do uh, freely now. And this is a coral gallery on top uh, for the first floor. Uh, this is a fish gallery. Uh, so this uh, we have done a lot of work in the, we are doing a lot of work in the fish gallery. So it needed a uh, lot of reorganization works. So now that the museum is empty, we are able to do our works. Without with peace, so it's it's a huge whale shark. Uh, whale, sh it's a shark, but looks like a whale. Now uh, it's a whale shark which is being cleaned, and all the this is the sailfish. So it's really very tough to uh, uh, climb up to that uh, height and then clean up. So this opportunity, this is a great opportunity for doing the all this kind of works. So. All the, um, uh, these are beautiful uh, teak wood showcases, you know, like um, uh, which uh, are being varnished. We don't want to throw them away in the name of modernization, in the name of new display. So we, we want to retain the old structure. These are British, established by the British pe uh, uh, people. And so, but still they have their own charm. And uh, I think it has to be retained. So we are varnishing and cleaning them up and uh, uh, making them presentable. So this work is also ongoing and uh, it has been almost completed. And uh, also the display uh, changes and all, it's a good, uh, nice uh, opportunity for us to think about new ways of uh, display. So this is the old display uh, label, some you can see. These have been replaced now with uh, more colorful and uh, attractive bilingual, um, you know, labels posters. So this is a new look of the fish gallery now. Yes, so that is a work uh, which has been done in the zoological galleries. Uh, so uh, let me go on move on with the, the conservation works, okay, the paintings. So we, we all know about uh, Ravi Verma, uh, Raja Ravi Verma. Okay. So we took up, uh, as I told you before, the National Art Gallery, it's going to be uh, reopened very soon. Uh, unfortunately, because of the COVID, uh, uh, it was not possible. The scheduled program was, has to be postponed. Um, so, but uh, all these uh, uh, Ravi Verma uh, paintings are, uh, uh, have been declared as uh, national treasures. So we have about 12 paintings in our collections and uh, by the Verma brothers, including his uh, son also. Um, and so the art, uh, these uh, were uh, exhibited in the contemporary art gallery. So now we, they have to be moved to the uh, National Art Gallery. So we, we wanted to um, renovate and uh, do some uh, restoration. Uh, sorry, no, it's not it's not restoration. It is conservation work on the um, paintings. So the, uh, the project was uh, envisaged uh, 
long ago, but unfortunately it was getting delayed because of the COVID, um, a lot of administrative problems. And finally, the project got started in um, March 2021. Uh, you know, it is almost a financial year end. So the numerous administrative challenges were uh, like uh, materials and equipment purchase, they need to be procured, some even imported from Switzerland. So inordinate delays were faced since all the flights and parcel services were withheld. Uh, so the team has to make utmost uh, preventive measures to safeguard their health also. So after 40 days, the project was completed by the end of April. So I shall now quickly show some photos related to the conservation treatment of five paintings. Um, so this is the lady with mirror. It is an oil painting on the con canvas painted by Raja Ravi Verma in the year 1894. This picture shows a lady holding a mirror in her hand and combing her flock of hair. The beauty of her hairstyle equipment painted with the artist is noteworthy. So this painting uh, won the governor's gold medal. So this, uh, let me show you what are the problems. So normally when you see this is, uh, you, you don't see any problem. Okay, so you have to see when under specialized lighting condition, which is known as a raking light, you know, you, uh, you can see the entire canvas is underground now. wrinkles and uh, so many problems are found. Uh, this is a close up, you can see uh, the tear, some uh, previous uh, works that has been done. Uh, a tire in the car, canvas has just been uh, mended and uh, the, uh, the paint was also uh, flaking at places. There were, you can see there were some dents and uh, holes. So these uh, need to be addressed. So this is also uh, the canvas in a very bad condition, which is not uh, viewable uh, 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 with the ordinary light. Okay, so that is one uh, painting and the other painting is uh, which was in a very uh, severe condition, uh, which needed uh, some intervention was uh, Yashoda and Krishna. So here the baby Krishna, you can see his facial, facial features resembles the fairies of European paintings. So you can uh, see under the raking light, you can see the problems, the severe problems. I don't want to explain all the technical details. Uh, it will be another uh, conservation lecture. So you can see the dents. This is the face where you can see uh, so many uh, defects. There is some dust and uh, mold also, you know, because of the lockdown, this is one uh, uh, important uh, problem. Uh, because of the lockdown, we uh, not able to do the regular maintenance work um, uh, because of the total lockdown. So what happens ultimately the uh, uh, paintings they suffer, I mean the museum objects they suffer because out of sight means out of mind and it's gone forever. So. Uh, they need constant uh, care observation. So because of the lockdown, because of a long period of lockdown, we were not able to uh, do the work and molds and fungi have uh, formed on the paintings. So all these had to be taken care of. This is another view of the same painting under the raking light. Yes. This is another painting um, going out. So in Bombay, the Varma brothers, they became uh, very close to the uh, Karegats, uh, Parsi family. So she is the younger daughter of the house and as uh, Ravi Varma had... Uh, Sorry, painted. madam, I am interrupting. Uh, can you please uh, make it shorter? Actually, our okay. time period is 5.30. So we're okay. having Mahajan ji. Uh, ah, okay, fine. Okay, I'll just rush through. Okay. Fine. I, without any uh, explanation, I'll just go through with yes, the yes yes yeah, yeah okay, okay. Thank if you. there is anything if you want to uh, anybody wants to ask or, uh, later uh, later on we'll be uh, in touch with you and also yeah, yeah. have you'll have uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, this is uh, not a technical uh, thing so just i just wanted to show you the painting yes ma'am this uh, is the inaugural session that's yeah, why yeah, yeah, yeah. yes okay so this is another one by uh, so the other two paintings shakuntala so we had about five paintings which had to be uh, conserved and we have uh, so we have uh, so let me show the treatment work which was done. Okay, very quickly I'll go. 
Yeah. So the opening of the frames. So the frame has been removed from the uh, uh, canvas. Okay. Yeah, this is the wax treatment. I mean, uh, those who are conservators, any conservators who are in this uh, audience, maybe they could understand it uh, better. So brushing up, cleaning, a lot of dust and dirt, which was there. So all these had been removed. Okay, I'm not going into the details. The wax or the varnish removal using a heated spatula is removing all the uh, wax material. So he is Mr. Selvar uh, um, who is the head of the team who uh, did this conservation work. So we had uh, uh, lengthy discussions before the treatment, uh, the proposed treatment work and all. So that is our commissioner, um, uh, uh, Ms. Ayes. He also kept, uh, he was very much interested in preservation of these very valuable paintings, national, which are national treasures. So he also visited uh, during um, different times of the various periods of conservation treatment. And we also had some lighter moments uh, in the lab. So that is Mr. Vinod Daniel from the uh, Australian Museum. He uh, is also a noted uh, international conservator. So the, because it's a high value painting, it uh, was at, it, it gathered the attention of many people. So this is after conservation. Okay. Now you can see how beautiful it has been restored. So I want to emphasize uh, uh, one point. See, all the museums, uh, I'm really glad that museums are becoming, uh, uh, are going towards technology, uh, embracing technology, so many technologies. Uh, but there are some certain uh, items, areas, which uh, technology cannot, I mean, we cannot solely depend on technology, like uh, taking care of the objects. It has cannot be done virtually. It has to be done on site and by real people. So it cannot be, uh, we cannot do a virtual operation, although it is possible uh, using robots. But then this conservation, it is the skill of the conservator and uh, of course, uh, unless something, some artificial intelligence or as uh, Anamika ma'am has told, uh, if that was um, something was developed for conservation, until then we have to uh, make uh, use of our uh, skilled people only. So. So this is a big challenge. And uh, so finally, we are able to com complete the conservation. We are able to finish all the five paintings on time. And now the laboratory looks forlorn and empty. Because the conservator, Dr. Selvar who did the uh, conservation of these paintings, he passed away uh, due to COVID. By the, be even before he got the check for the um, um, work he had done. So it's a very, uh, very, very uh, sorry, I mean, situation because uh, we have lost a lot of uh, museum fraternity, museum people, so many people have been uh, succumbed to this uh, COVID. So let us not give up our hope because uh, we are going to fight this pandemic hand in hand. And, uh, and uh, of course, we will come out of this successfully. So I take this opportunity to pay homage to who, all those people who have lost their battle to COVID. So there's so many good friends and colleagues working in museums all over India. And I'm sure we will successfully come out of this crisis very soon with positivity and vigor to face even more challenges in future. I thank everyone for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much, Madam. It's uh, a very nice topic. Uh, really, it's a very uh, a brilliant time for all museum uh, personnel to take forward our uh, challenges and also to uh, keep uh, our uh, conservation work uh, intact. This is the time we should uh, make it uh, uh, very useful because uh, in the regular time, uh, we're not having so much time and space for uh, conservation work and all cleaning work. So this uh, this is a nice uh, uh, 
opportunity for all of the museum personnel to uh, do our uh, basic conservation work for the objects. Thank you, ma'am. So um, uh, we'll, we'll be in touch with you in our future projects and plans. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, now I request uh, Vibhas ji, uh, can we uh, connect uh, Mahaj uh, Arvind Mahajan ji? Or, uh, Hello. Mahajan Hello. ji? महाजन जी कुछ ऑफिशियल मीटिंग में मैम चले गए हैं तो उनका रिकॉर्डेड वर्जन जो है हमारे पास है तो देन हम अभी उसको स्टार्ट करते हैं मिथुन जी आप वो स्टार्ट कर दीजिए प्लीज ओके महाजन जी हेलो सोनी सोनी आई वुड लाइक टू इंटरप्ट हियर प्लीज विभास जी हेलो यस मैम यस मैम ऐसा करेंगे तो अभी जो महाजन जी नहीं है ना तो अभी हम सेक्रेटरी सर बोल रहे हैं कि वो उनको डायरेक्ट लाइव सुनने के लिए वो ज्यादा इंटरेस्टेड हैं तो उनका वो रिकॉर्डिंग को हम अभी रख देंगे फिर जो नेक्स्ट वीक में जो रखेंगे तो उनको हम लाइव लेंगे ठीक है तो अभी अभी प्लीज आप आपका स्टार्ट कीजिए एंड सेक्रेटरी सर का कुछ मीटिंग भी है वो आपको सुनने के लिए चाहते हैं तो आप जल्दी मतलब शॉर्टकट करके इसको आज हम वाइंड अप करेंगे Okay. Sure. Sure. We request Vibhas ji and Mithun ji to have some words uh, on this topic and uh, their cooperation and everything. Uh, then we wind up this uh, session for uh, this time. Uh, and next yeah. time. Okay. We'll... Now, now, uh, now, uh, Suchasmita, uh, let's uh, go with the talk of our Vibhas ji. तो विभास जी क्या बोलते हैं हम सुनने के लिए बहुत ही ज्यादा इंटरेस्टेड हैं और जो महाजन जी नहीं है उनको लाइव सुनने के लिए वी ऑल आर वेरी मच इंटरेस्टेड टू हियर फ्रॉम हिम लाइव सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद विभास जी ओके मैम थैंक यू सभी को मेरा नमस्कार सॉरी मैं थोड़ा ट्रेवल में हूँ तो मुझे इसी अभी करना पड़ रहा है जो अभी सिचुएशन थे काफी लोगों से वर्चुअल रूप में ही मिल पा रहा हूँ इस पीरियड में तो कोविड का सबसे बड़ा इफेक्ट हम लोग देख रहे हैं कि एक बंद कमरे में रह गए हैं एक पंछी की तरह हम लोगों की हाल हो गए हैं लेकिन जो अभी चैलेंजेस और अपॉर्चुनिटी की बात है लास्ट वन एंड हाफ मंथ से हम लोग कंटिन्यूस इस पे वेबिनार्स कर रहे हैं और जो अभी चीजें चल रही है उसमें जैसे की माननीय मंत्री महोदय जी ने कहा माननीय सेक्रेटरी साहब ने कहा कि डिजिटल मोड पे चीजों को लाना होगा तो हमारा बस एक कंसर्न सबसे पहले है कि जो भी म्यूजियम है उनका इन्वेंट्री मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम कलेक्शन मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम वो सभी तरीके से साउंड प्रूफ हो जाए ताकि बेसिक डाटा इमेजेस अभी जैसे टू स्कैनिंग और थ्री स्कैनिंग की बात हो रही है स्कैनिंग के डिफरेंट लेवल्स आ गए ताकि हम उसको डिफरेंट लेवल पे प्ले कर सकें तो ऐसी चीजों को हमें जानना चाहिए अभी उड़ीसा स्टेट म्यूजियम इनिशिएटिव ले रही है वर्चुअल गैलरी का जैसा कि हमने सुना सेक्रेटरी साहब के संबोधन में तो इसका एक फुल प्रूफ प्लान होना चाहिए और इसमें सारे एक्सपर्ट्स जो जो भी नीतिगत काम होने चाहिए तो उसमें रूट लेवल से होनी चाहिए क्योंकि प्रोजेक्ट जो होते हैं हमेशा एक शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन में एक ही पार्ट कम्प्लीट हो पाता है और जिसके कारण जो है वो फुल प्रूफ हो नहीं पाता तो स्टार्ट टू इंड होना चाहिए इफ इफ यदि डिजिटाइजेशन हो रहा है जिस भी मोड से हो रहा है फॉर फ्यूचरिस्टिक हमें होना चाहिए कि फ्यूचर में हमें ये किस तरीके से जो है हमारी समस्याओं का समाधान कर सकता है रिसर्चर का समाधान कर सकता है वर्चुअल एग्जीबिशन के लिए तैयार हो सकते हैं तो ए टू जेड ऑब्जेक्ट का सबसे पहले डिजिटाइजेशन होना चाहिए और वो भी डिफरेंट लेवल पे होना चाहिए जिसकी थ्री डी आवश्यकता है थ्री डी स्कैनिंग होनी चाहिए जिसका टू डी है वो होना चाहिए और प्लस जो कि पब्लिकेशन हर किसी चीज के लिए जरूरी होता है और इस ये जब तक पब्लिश नहीं होगा तब तक हम म्यूजियम में अपने विजिटर्स को ही लेके आ सकते हैं और ये पब्लिकेशन सिर्फ मैं बुक्स के लिए नहीं कह रहा हूँ डिफरेंट एज ग्रुप के लिए अलग अलग पब्लिकेशन हो सकते हैं गेम भी एक पब्लिकेशन का ही पार्ट में मान रहा हूँ कि बच्चों को इंटरेक्ट म्यूजियम से कैसे करें गेम करें ऑनलाइन जैसे अभी हम लोग वेबिनार कर रहे हैं तो बच्चों को भी हम लोग इस तरीके के वेबिनार्स में जोड़ सकते हैं पूरे उड़ीसा के बच्चों को लेके हम लोग कर सकते हैं पूरे राष्ट्रीय नेशनल लेवल पे बच्चों को जोड़ के कर सकते हैं स्कूल्स को लेके जोड़ के कर सकते हैं तो डिफरेंट लेवल पे कर सकते हैं बट हमारे पास एक बेसिक डाटा पहले होना चाहिए हम बच्चों को क्या दिखाएंगे या जो जिस एज ग्रुप के हैं उनको हम क्या दिखाएंगे तो बेसिक डाटा फॉर्मेशन जो है ये सबसे बड़ी आज नीड है 
और मैं ये कह सकता हूँ कि भारत में किसी भी म्यूजियम का फुल प्रूफ डाटा आज तक डॉक्यूमेंटेड नहीं हुआ जिसको कि लेके फ्यूचर का प्लान बनाया जा सके तो इस पैंडेमिक का हम लोगों को यूज जो है उस तरीके से करना चाहिए गांधी मैत्री मैडम जी ने काफी अच्छा प्रोजेक्ट कम्पलीशन इस लॉकडाउन के पीरियड में किया और पहले भी काफी काम वो की है मैं देखता रहा हूँ और काफी इंट्रेक्शन रहा था मैम से जब एन में मैम थी वहां पे और काफी मीटिंग्स में मैं मिला तो इनका काम का लेवल ही बिल्कुल अलग है और अनामिका विश्वास मैम का तो मैं काफी प्रोजेक्ट्स इनके साथ किया इनसे काफी कुछ सीखा हूं तो मैं चाहता हूं कि और जो टेक्निक्स हैं जो चीजें हैं हम लोगों के बीच में लाए और जिससे कि हम लोग और अच्छे से हर संग्रहालय को सुसज्जित कर सके थैंक यू मैम Thank you, Vibhas ji, for your cooperation. And uh, Mithun ji, very shortly you can have your points and views. After that, Bharat, Dr. Bharati Pal will give the formal vote of thanks of this webinar. Uh, just please. Thank you. आप सभी को मेरा नमस्कार. मेरा नाम Mithun है. Uh, I am a uh, technologist uh, specialist in museums. Uh, last एक दशक से मैं museums के साथ जुड़ा हुआ हूँ और technologies बना रहा हूँ. Uh, जो भी टेक्नोलॉजीज हम बात करते हैं जो यूरोप अमेरिका एंड अलग अलग क्षेत्रों में देखे जाते हैं uh, इसको मैं बनाता हूं तो मेरा टेक ये है uh, जो हम बचपन से सुनते आ रहे हैं कि आवश्यकता ही आविष्कार की जननी है uh, इसका यूटिलिटी uh, जो है इस समय से बेहतर कभी नहीं हो सकता और आज आवश्यकता है हम लोगों को अलग अलग तरीके से सोचने की सो दैट वी कैन एसोसिएट एंड बी नो की पीपल Uh, connected to their roots and heritage and now technology basically plays a wonderful medium uh, wherein you know uh, using engagements and uh, uh, yeah you know, knowledge transfer into a lot of things like for example jaise hum abhi research kar rahe hain uh, because abhi touch is a problem we have developed a technology where you don't need to touch at all okay. uh, so and like this uh, you know we are working on various <laughs> डेवलपिंग इट एंड लेट्स keep doing these sessions so that uh, you know we can share uh, with uh, our fellow speakers who bring in such great points some great perspectives uh, so i i right now i'm just going to close by thanking uh, every one of you uh, you know i'll just name all of you uh, here uh, shri jyoti prakash uh, uh, panigrahi ji uh, shri vishnupad sethi ji uh, ranjan kumar das ji anamika biswas ji uh, arvin ji abhi hai nahi but arvin ji thank you जे एम गांधीमती जी भाग्यलिपि मल्ला जी विभास जी सुशिस्मिता जी एंड भारती पाल जी थैंक यू एंड लेट्स यू नो कीप डूइंग दिस सेशन एंड ग्रो दिस कम्युनिटी फर्दर Uh, okay, Mithun ji. Actually, uh, before giving you uh, the uh, presenting you the vote of thanks, uh, one more uh, uh, some more lines I would like to share with you people. कि मैं सबसे पहले मैं अनामिका मैडम को thanks बोलना चाहूँगी कि actually uh, जो इनका जो presentation था इसमें हम लोग ने इतना delighted हुआ कि हम ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा try करेंगे कि इसके ऊपर कितना कैसे हम ज़्यादा काम कर सकते हैं और uh, I would like to request अनामिका uh, मैडम and uh, very uh, frequently we will uh, be in touch with her and we'll take all uh, uh, advice and uh, decisions uh, from her and uh, uh, this is our request on behalf of Odisha State Museum madam anamika madam so uh, i'm really happy uh, be with you today uh, so really i'm really and really thankful to you and uh, one more thing i would like to share with um, um, uh, gandhi mati madam Gandhi Mati Madam actually uh, may call he um, uh, returned from Chennai. Uh, I was there for three days, and again uh, I will go um, on this coming Sunday. 
and i will be there uh, three to four days there uh, um, uh, for uh, some medical uh, ground um, for my uh, nephew i will uh, have to go to mgm hospital and uh, i think uh, i will meet you there and i will go to your museum and we'll discuss you lively what uh, you were doing there in this pandemic situation and i will take all advice and suggestions from you uh, sitting with you and uh, with a cup of coffee welcome so, i think, uh, no, I think it will be very nice and um, uh, i will talk to you about telephone when you are free i will uh, come to you and uh, discuss with you and uh, it's a very good um, uh, webinar and uh, our authorities are became so happy and uh, vibhas ji will uh, continue this uh, webinar uh, uh, all through the month what i think uh, i will uh, will do will arrange such type of seminars webinars uh, four times in a week i'm uh, in a month i i mean uh, once in a week uh, uh, so today uh, this is the very good beginning and we'll take more and more uh, participants and uh, in uh, coming um, session uh, i think we'll take uh, mohajan sir and uh, he is also very much close to me known to me mohajan sir so that is why only i also thought uh, ki uh, we will uh, take a session live session uh, from him and uh, please convey my message to him that uh, we all want uh, that uh, his live session with us so it's my um, my opinion and my view uh, with uh, this uh, um, webinar and on behalf of our honorable uh, minister and our esteemed uh, secretary they all are happy with this uh, uh, type of uh, um, uh, webinar which is very very uh, uh, time bound uh, program so i'm really happy again i would uh, express my thank to anamika madam that after so long time i i i i can be able to talk with her uh, only due to vibhas ji so vibhas ji i'm really thankful to you and very shortly i'm going to meet uh, gandhimati madam you were there no uh, in coming uh, week in your i will be there ma'am when welcome any time ma'am you can contact me any time i'll be there waiting for you hello hello namaskar myself dr bharati pal i am curator state museum i express my gratitude and thanks to our our honorable minister tourism odia language literature and culture our principal secretary our director our superintendent odisha state museum my colleague suchismita mantri and all the dignitaries they have spoken this today on the how to challenge this uh, museum during this pandemic times nobody knows how this how many years how many days this pandemic will be occurs and we must prepare for this and nowadays technology is very developed we have also doing virtual in archaeology galleries bronze gallery in futures we have also planning doing all the virtual work in all all the museums all the galleries of our state museums and we also take your suggestions in futures and thanks for giving you giving your valuable information and suggestion how to deal with this pandemics in the covid 19 situations all the museums in the national and international museum now in days are closing so how to reach the museum to the people far, far from uh, the, from everywhere every globes of the places of the country so we are trying to reach the peoples from all the, all parts of the country so we are i am thanking you um, very much from my heart and also our superintendent our principal secretary they have always encouraged us how to win. Um, innovative idea give the innovative idea to develop our museum this challenging times thank you very much and i hope that we all overcomes from this pandemic by the grace of lord jai jagannath thank you vande mataram namaskar vande utkala janani uh can we all start our video so that we can take some uh, group photographs um uh, mithun i think uh, kk sharma ji wants to uh, speak something uh, we should uh, give him a few more yes, moments please. 
सर अपना माइक ऑन करके आप बोल सकते हैं ओ, मेरी आवाज आ रही है जी जी आ, मैंने क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर सीरीज में मैंने दर्द को लिख कर दे दिया था उसमें जो अनामिका जी ने एक चीज बोली थी इसके ऊपर जो रिजर्व कलेक्शन के ऊपर जो था वो मेरा उसमें मैं उनके पॉइंट से बहुत एग्री था कि जो रिजर्व ये एक बड़ी गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी है कि जो हमारे रिजर्व कलेक्शन है क्योंकि आप देखिए कि सेवेंटी टू एट्टी परसेंट कलेक्शन जो रिजर्व में है टेन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट जो हमारे डिस्प्ले में है लेकिन अभी ये वर्चुअल और ऑनलाइन एग्जीबिशन के कारण जो वो सारी एक तो हमारा सारा डिजिटाइजेशन हो रहा है और दूसरा जो ऑनलाइन एग्जीबिशन और वर्चुअल एग्जीबिशन जो हो रही है उसमें सारा हमारा ये जितना भी रिजर्व कलेक्शन है वो निकल करके आ रहा है तो ये एक बड़ी ये बड़ी गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी है एक चीज जो मेरे दिमाग में बार बार आ रहा है कि हम टेक्नोलॉजी की बात कर रहे हैं एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजी की बात कर रहे हैं वर्चुअल की बात कर रहे हैं हम लोग का केवल मेट्रोपोलिटन सिटी के जो विजिटर है उन्हीं को कन्फाइन कर रहे हैं वट अबाउट द रूरल गाँव के लोगों के लिए क्या है That we have to think. क्योंकि वहां तो ये टेक्नोलॉजी इतनी एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजी नहीं है वहां पे हम कैसे पहुंचे दिस इज अनदर चैलेंज ये बहुत बड़ी चुनौती है हमारे लिए म्यूजियम के लिए सबसे बड़ी चुनौती ये कि वो ग्रामीण क्षेत्र में कैसे पहुंचेगा कैसे करेगा और वो भी भारत जैसे देश में कैसे करेगा जहां पर की सबसे अधिक आबादी रहने वाले गाँव में है आप गाँव में कैसे पहुंचेंगे This is the question. This is a very, this is a very, you know, challenge for museum community. Thank Metropolitan you so much. Thank 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 you so much.
सोनौली का दैट इज अ वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल जैसे उन्होंने मनोज वाजपेयी को उसमें लिया और उसमें एंकरिंग मनोज वाजपेयी ने किया दैट इज वेरी पॉपुलर वो बहुत पॉपुलर गया है वो तो मतलब इस तरीके से कुछ ऐसा इंटरेस्टिंग और ऐसा मतलब जिससे कि ज्यादा से ज्यादा अवेयरनेस आए उसमें उसमें एक क्यूरियोसिटी हो या तो वो होता क्या मैं मैं बताऊं होता क्या म्यूजियम के बारे में सोच के वो ऑन ही नहीं करता उसको ऑफ भी रखा रखते हैं नहीं सर आ, ये अभी आ, भावना हमारी बदलने वाली है बहुत जल्दी अगर हम वो बदलनी है उन प्लेटफॉर्म्स पर जाएंगे आप अंदाजा नहीं लगा सकते कि राइट नाउ आई कैन इफ आई कुड शेयर देर इज अंग यू नो अ स्टार्टअप they have come up with uh, an idea where they are selling an app for museums hmm. and that app is uh, it's, it's just a jaise aapko retailer ke liye milta hai waisa app hai you can use your museum apni collection us pe de dijiye aapki puri collection dikhayega jaise aapko amazon pe dikhai deta hai ya aapko mintra pe dikhai deta hai so if youngsters are doing this it means and he is not a you know tier 1 ka bachcha nahi hai wo tier 2 tier 3 hmm. ka bachcha hai hmm. so hmm. ye ye baat agar wo soch sakta hai to iska matlab there is inquisitiveness we are not reaching there it's our fault but yeah, there is there is, is there is inquisitor aisa nahi hai ki log interested nahi hai log bahut interested hai aur shayad jo community mein log hain jo ki root level pe log hain they are more much more you know uh, uh, eager to put their heritage in such a way that uh, it is preserved that it is showcased i am giving you example from northeast they are very much they are very much into it and aap wo bachcha kahin se utha lijiye chahe nift ka ho chahe college ka ho they would talk about their cultural heritage with so much of conviction and so much of love and affection it's really to be you know uh, appreciated so wo hai ki hum is taraf se dekh rahe hain jab hum us taraf se dekhte hain to bahut kuch hai bas ha ye hai ignite karne ki baat hai ki kahan se hum log strategically or policy level pe isko lana chahte hain exactly exactly that is right Yeah, absolutely agree. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I agree with yeah, valid point. Thank you, thank you for giving the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think we should uh, we can all yeah, leave now. Yeah, but I'm I'm both okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you all. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice. Day. Thank you.